Okay, so Waveshare have sent this to me. So this is a Compute Module 5 board inside a steel box, very industrial. Uh, they've also sent me this. I'll show this a little bit, but I'll probably do a separate video on it because this is a dual monitor setup and it looks pretty cool. But first, if we concentrate on this, now mine's had a bit of a batter. You can see this is a bit bent up, so I'm gonna have to use a spanner to bend that back. But this is showing that this is actually wall mountable. So you can see. If I pull the lid off, now it's got four screws, I've already taken those out. You can see there's a PWM controlled fan, so a temperature controlled fan in here. And if I tip it up this way, you'll be able to see the size of the fan. And if I spin this around, rather than disconnect the fan. So the Compute Module 5 I've already put in there. This is a 4 gig model with no EMMC drive. We have access to the GPIO pins when it's in the case. So this board gives us GPIO pins on the outside and they're all labeled on here as well. You can see connectivity is good and it's all on this side for the main connection. So a couple of HDMIs, a couple of USB 2, a couple of USB 3, Ethernet, which also supports power. So that's the PoE bit, which I'll show in a minute. And USB-C it can use for power as well. You can already see I've got an MVME in here. And this supports 2230, 4260 and 80 sizes. There's all sorts of extra bits in here and I'm going to need their website to be able to explain what they are. But if I pop the lid back on and show you the other side. So here we've got two camera connections which also are display connections as well. And we've got a power button. Now here you can see my ethernet cable, if I plug that into the ethernet connection and spin it around, you can see that it's already lit up. So if I'm using this headless, that's it. That's the Pi set up and running. But I'm gonna plug in an HDMI cable and I'm also gonna plug in USB because I've got mouse and keyboard there. And that's booted up. So this is Raspberry Pi OS, but my version with KDE Plasma. So let's go to their website and see what they say about it. Well, the fan's not particularly quiet, but I guess I'm used to running either three volt or I'm running sort of less industrial fans. I guess you could put a bigger fan in there if you wanted or change the fan, there's plenty of room. So they do loads of Raspberry Pi things. Let's go with, okay, so Compute Module 5. Oh, and they sell the case on its own. So suitable for evaluating the Raspberry Pi CM5 or being integrated into end products, PoE baseboard for all Compute Module 5 variants. And as you can see here, there's the GPIO pins on the actual board, whereas I've got that breakout on the top of mine. Uh, there's the kit. The PoE supports five volt, five amp, and the ethernet switch I'm using is the cheapest one that they do on Amazon. Uh, so this one here. So it can support up to 30 watts for one device, 40 watts total. And this is the standard they were asking for. So 802.3 AF forward slash AT. And then you need a power over ethernet compatible cable, but they're pretty cheap. So any one of these output ports can support power over ethernet. And obviously it passes on the internet connection to that device. So really convenient. So I mentioned the GPIO pins. The USB is 3.2 Gen 1. So two of those and two USB 2. Four line MIPI interface. Two HDMI ports supports 4K. It's got a real-time clock battery in there. I've got an SD card slot. And it's a bit weird with Compute Module 5. If it's got an EMMC drive, it ignores the SD card. But because this is one without any storage on it, my Compute Module 5, then I should be able to use an SD card. I can try that in a minute. So five volt fan. The NVMe supports up to Gen 3 speeds, which is the maximum on the Raspberry Pi 5 and Compute Module 5. So 5 volt, 5 amp, and the dimensions of the case are here if you need that. Now in the box, I got a couple of NVMe screws and a screwdriver and a power supply which supports up to 15 volts. Uh, but it does go down to 5 volt because this is a USB-C one. I've had some mini PC ones recently where... They were stuck at 12 volt. This one isn't, this is a proper one. So it can work with other devices. It looks like you might be able to get away with only 15 watts uh, on a PoE switch, but uh, they do recommend the 30 watt. And obviously the more you plug in, the more power it's gonna need. So it talks about the Gen 3 speeds, what type of NVMe drives it supports. So what haven't I covered? Obviously the CM5 socket, but there was a CM5 plugged into it, so you couldn't see that. There's a clearer view of the GPIO pins. 
and a picture of it wall mounted. So this setup is with two cameras and also a display. So we've got 15 miscellaneous configurations for extending other functions. So that's these extra pins here. Different settings here, 3.3 or 1.8 volt, PoE enabled or disabled. And you can do that with these little, I can't remember what they call them now, but used to get them on hard drives to change the state from master to, I think I, you can't say the other word. And we've got this 17 here, which is cam one and display one I2C bus for the jumpers when using cam one or display and the SD card slot, which is somewhere underneath the NVMe drive. They do go into detail about all the dimensions and everything. And documentation is good. So if we have a look at the manual, I've looked this up before because funnily enough, I was trying to use the power over ethernet cable and I wasn't sure which one of my cables was working. So I was plugging things in and trying it out. And I found in the book that it said about how you had to have these set. Mine was set for PoE anyway, so it was fine, but I'd forgotten to put the compute module five in. So it didn't light up at all. And then when I realized that, plugged it in, it was fine. So we click on the wiki. Very comprehensive information here. Oh, so the 12 volt output is only present when powered by power over ethernet. And it talks about the standard way of enabling Gen 3 speeds, but you can also do that through Raspberry Config. So I've removed the NVMe drive and I've put an SD card in the slot there and I've booted up Android. Nice to see that Constacang's version of Android works on a Compute Module 5. So if I launch Ada64, so it recognizes it as a Raspberry Pi 5. Oh, is it? So this is a two gig one. So that's quite low for running a modern version of Android. But obviously it's booted up. Let's see what happens if I launch something with a video. Oh yeah, it's pretty slow. Uh, so yeah, so no relation to the board or the box. It's just because I'm running it with two gigabyte of RAM on the compute module five. Oh yes, definitely slow. And YouTube just started and then stopped. Oh, it is still there. But yeah, that's pretty slow. I'll shut that down. I wonder what the other Compute Module 5 is that I've got. So this is the one with an EMMC drive. The SD card slot is a, like a push and let go one and feels nice and solid. That's my cat in the background making that noise. Uh, and I've actually put all the screws back in, so I'm gonna have to take those out again to swap over the Compute Module 5 board. So pull that apart again, and let's just pop that one out and pop this one in. Of course I forget, it does say on the board now, so two gig light model, but I want four gig because I wanna try out those two displays that I showed at the start of the video. And I can't actually get the screw back in there because of the bent bit. I did manage to get it out, but I'm gonna get some pliers and just bend that back into place. Right, this should probably do it. Yeah, it's pretty pretty tough though. You need something with a bit of leverage. Okay, that will do. I can get that last screw back in now. Right, let's have a quick look at this. So cleaning cloth and instructions. Loads of cables. So I've got two HDMI to HDMI mini and two USB-C cables. And also it looks like an iPhone charger. So does it open like a laptop? Yeah. Okay. Wow, they look huge. Must be quite a strong mechanism to be able to hold these two displays. Oh, I see. It's like, like that. Look at it, it's massive. Let me get my MacBook to show, or I can use my cat to show how big it is. So this is a 13 inch MacBook. And I thought it'd be interesting to see if I could power it from this Ugreen adapter. This is a 130 watt power bank. Okay, so the monitor's USB-C power, so I'm gonna see if this powers the monitor. Okay, it's lit up and it says it's taking 5.9, 11.9 watts on startup. Right, let's plug the Pi in. Okay, so it's booting up from the EMMC drive. The fan's running at full power at the moment because the PWM control hasn't kicked in. Yeah, now it's kicked in. Wow, that's <laughs> so cool. So this is all running from this power bank. And if we have a look at how much power it's currently using, so this is running the Pi and the monitor. So we've got 15.9 watts and 2.5 watts. So 
So that'll run for three hours. Uh, this is only at 85%, so it'll run for longer than that on this configuration. So I could work in Costa Coffee or Starbucks on this setup, completely portable, for around about, I don't know, three and a half, four hours. So if we call up files, you can see that it comes up bang in the middle of the screen. I'll do this in a longer video because these monitors are pretty cool. Uh, anyway, thanks to Waveshare for sending me both of these. I really like the PoE box and uh, I'm looking forward to playing around with these monitors. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.